Hi there, this is Robin Norgren, and I'm your host for Montessori Creativity and the Meaning of Life. You can find all the work that I do on Instagram under Robin underscore Norgren or on my website at www.josiesartschool.com. I'd like to start with some words from a book called Taking Flight by Kelly Ray Roberts. Embracing the questions that pop up along the creative path means engaging in a dialogue with them, similar to any heart-to-heart -heart you would have with a dear friend. One where you would be completely engrossed in what they had to say, nudging the conversation along with an understanding glance or two. Just like a friend in need, your questions don't need you to offer an easy solution. They just want to be heard and validated. The answers will come later, in small, unforced moments, perhaps when you least expect them. It's in the journey, after all, where our creative truth and answers breathe and live and dance, not in the planning and the plotting and the seeking of a destination. Creatively, that means being mindful of the opportunities that lie camouflaged in our unasked or unanswered questions. Maybe there isn't a next step right now. Maybe you don't have to know if you're on the right path at this very moment. Sometimes our creative spirit wants us to express what it means and feels to be in the very moment we're in today, instead of anguishing over the ins and outs of where we're going. Perhaps the questions are really asking us not to know, not to control, not to immediately answer away their wisdom. Instead, they want us to embrace them, hang out for a while, without a task-oriented to-do list, with a strange and narrow path that leads to the answers. Like so many others, sometimes I think I need to know the exact direction I'm heading. My practical organizational nature takes over and begins to micromanage every step of my creative journey. Perhaps you're like me, a taskmaster who likes to feel in control of her surroundings, her creative steps. The spreadsheets come out, the calculator comes out, my analytical brain gets excited and ready to work, work, work. What I have learned over and over again, the lesson keeps repeating itself until I finally get it, is that I don't have to know exactly where it is I'm going to land. Rather, it's the journey, the beautifully fluid and organic nature of the creative process that is the most important and rewarding, not the destination. I can let go of the what ifs and the shoulds because here's what I've learned. When we're doing what it is we're meant to do, when we allow our creative spirit a bit of freedom to roam the mysteries of the unknown, the universe opens up to us. We don't worry over the details. Things seem to serendipitously fall into place. We are in the moment and our creative spirit soars. The wonderful part of embracing the questions of our creative lives is the creative abandon it gives our spirit. Once we rest with the knowledge that we don't have to know, then we begin to understand that all we have to do is our best and the rest isn't ours to determine. In essence, we just have to show up show up with our paints, our hands, our creative energy and our curiosity, and simply do our best. The rest isn't ours to control. The answers lie in the simplicity of having faith in the journey. Remember that it's okay to stay in a space of unknowing for a while, to just sit with the questions themselves without knowing an immediate answer. And even at times when your inner voice is shouting all the answers, 
Remember to keep your inspired curiosity nurtured every step of the way. One of the most important parts of the journey is to dig deep, to ask questions in the first place, and to give a voice to all that is inside of our hearts. Daniel Laporte, White Hot Truth. I'm in downward facing dog in yoga class when the very bubbly, very young yoga instructor says to us all, now when you're down there, just love yourself. I want to punch her. Nice thought. It's even the right thought, but it's just not that simple. So much of self-help speak is love yourself, love yourself, you got to love yourself. Yes, do. And then the hyper motivational champs step up to the mic and tell us to do what ordinary people fear. Find a way, not an excuse. Yes, do. But we're missing the deeper dialogue when it comes to self-love and determination. Loving yourself, even when you do it most humbly, can attract some not so loving responses. When you start to care more deeply about your own well-being, a whole new set of inner and outer challenges will surface in your life. Self-respect can create conflict. Just get used to it. You will experience sharp and surprising pangs of self-hatred on your way to self-respect. This is what happens. You're morphing beautifully and certainly into your assured self. You're less critical, more embracing, and just as marvelously, you're expressing yourself more purely. You're really becoming you through love. You are loving yourself into fullness. And then you slip into the old you for an interminable moment. Something triggers you, and you revert to the former, rougher, or wimpier version of yourself You try to get something done with your old tricks and tactics, and then you extra, extra hate yourself for it. My journey to love myself more truly can be summed up in one word, softer. The closer I am to my essence, the softer I become. I'm still fierce, even fiercer in some ways but I can be on my own edge without being as edgy, more fluid, less angular. But every once in a while, especially if I'm feeling threatened, my inner Joan Jett takes over. She served me well in high school when I had to be scrappier. And when I was carving out my identity and activist spirit in my early 20s, she was handy. And she was very attracted to dudes who liked to conquest. Joan would jump into my body, and I'd get all rock and roll and respond to any number of issues with a stunningly elegant refrain, like I fucking care. But I grew up. Like, totally. Which is to say, I started to take care of myself in more well-rounded ways. All of myself. My feelings, my body, my money, my future. Turns out I did fucking care. A lot. I grew into the truth that I was absolutely, positively worthy of my desires. And I didn't need to scrap or overcompromise to get what I wanted. Instead, radiance and discernment would serve me very, very well. Softer. Jump to a few months ago. I bumped into a friend in Venice Beach. He's tall, dark, and swoony. And as luck would have it, my hair was down that day and I was wearing my favorite skirt. We were so happy to see each other, laughing and bright-eyed. In the course of catching up, he asked for my business advice, and then I slipped out of my fullness and into my halfness. I got all masculine and sturdy and started elaborating on the issue. As Brene Brown would put it, I stood at hustling for worthiness as I started channeling Joan Jett for a hot minute. And then I heard myself say it, just in passing, 
about a business, business issue of my own. Like I fucking care. I actually spoke it out loud. Who said that? Because it wasn't me. It was Joner. I winced inside. Maybe he didn't even notice. Maybe he thought I was as cool as I was trying to be. Though I distinctly felt the air ripple with surprise. The conversation naturally flowed to the next topic, with more flirty laughs and a goodbye hug. That instant incident plagued me for days. I can't believe I said that. That's so unlike me. Erase, erase, ew. I was 99% awesomely myself with Mr. Swoon, but that 1% was really irking me. I built a whole therapy session around it. So why the, did that one moment of janky inauthenticity hit me, sir, so hard? I asked my psychotherapist, the luminous Ann Davin, because the new, more embodied you isn't tolerating the old lies anymore. Oh, that's so why. Word up, Joan Jett. I have moved on. You have to love the you that you outgrew. These are the disowned parts of yourself that are less spiritually cultivated than you are now. You have to bring them into your heart, treat them like you would a sister or a beloved. Until you reclaim those unintegrated parts of yourself, you do not have your full power. Part of you is out there, wandering around, looking for a loving home or a rock band to belong to. When you can honor and love the fool that you used to be, some even greater growth will happen. Stay with me here. You can start to love the part of you that didn't love all of you. You'll give yourself a break for being so self-judgmental. Then we're really talking about self-love and acceptance. This is from my book, Deep in the Way You Live Your Life. It's time to make one of your dreams come true. Edgar Allan Poe said, They who dream by day are cognizant of many things which escape those who dream only by night. Write down three dreams that you have right now. What do those dreams have in common? How close are you to making them a reality? Take one of those dreams and create a map to success, moving in one-month increments. <laughs> 